It's hard to imagine what New York would be like without the Brooklyn Bridge. The iconic bridge spans over the East River and thousands of people cross the bridge every day to get between Manhattan and Brooklyn. It first opened to the public on May 24, 1883 and was designed and constructed over two generations of the Roebling family by John Washington and Emily Roebling. The design is a hybrid between a cable stayed and suspension bridge and was the world's first suspension bridge to incorporate steel wire. It's a total of 1,834 meters long, with the main span between the two suspension towers being 486.3 meters long. The bridge evolved over time and has transported everything from horse-drawn vehicles, trolleys, and carts. However, the bridge has been renovated a couple times in the 1950s, 1980s, and 2010s to maintain its safety and accommodate different transportation flows. The bridge was built to provide vehicular and pedestrian traffic between Manhattan and Brooklyn. Prior to its construction, people had to take a ferry from Brooklyn to Manhattan, which was incredibly time-consuming. As a result, the Brooklyn Bridge would have to be the longest and tallest suspension bridge ever built at the time. Many skeptics compounded these challenges and predicted that the entire structure was going to collapse into the East River. This would be devastating as the total bridge cost was about $400 million US in today's currency and took 27 lives during its construction. Unfortunately, the original designer and chief engineer of the bridge, John Roebling, died during a preliminary survey of the project. The bridge is able to hold a load of 18,700 short tons, which is about 17 million kilograms. Shortly after the bridge opened, 21 elephants were led across it in a promotional event to prove the bridge's stability. As we mentioned a bit earlier, the Brooklyn Bridge is a hybrid between a suspension and cable stay bridge, both designs of which contribute to its strength and stability. The suspension portion involved large steel cables supported by two central suspension towers, which give the bridge its iconic look. These cables were then anchored on each side of the bank on both the Brooklyn and Manhattan sides. The deck of the bridge was then suspended from these steel cables from secondary steel wires. Although the suspension design would have likely been sufficient from a design perspective, Roebling incorporated a cable state portion as well. The cable stay portion involved diagonal cables that ran directly to the support towers, which increases stability and adds redundancy. The month following John's death, his son Washington Roebling took over his father's role as the chief engineer. The foundation of the building's two suspension towers started off with caissons made of wood. Caissons are large boxes used in the foundation of bridge piers and are built in such a way that the materials inside, like water and soil, can be removed. This leaves the interior of the caisson dry and allows workers to move around freely. The caissons used for the Brooklyn Bridge were large wooden bottomless boxes that were sunk to the bottom of the East River. The working chambers were then filled with compressed air to prevent surrounding groundwater from seeping in. Airlocks were located at the top of the caissons to allow workers to enter and exit while maintaining the air pressure inside the caissons. Workers nicknamed Sandhogs dug the Brooklyn side caisson 13.6 meters to bedrock and the Manhattan side caisson to a much deeper sandy subsoil layer 23.9 meters deep. You might be wondering why they didn't just dig the Manhattan caisson to bedrock as they did with the Brooklyn caisson. This was because the bedrock layer was much deeper than anticipated and due to the higher air pressure in the deeper Manhattan caisson, many workers became sick with decompression sickness despite the use of airlocks. Essentially, the deeper you are in a body of water, the higher the pressure you'll experience because more water is on top of you. This is called hydrostatic pressure. Washington decided to halt the Manhattan case in construction at a depth of 23.9 meters due to the increased risk of decompression sickness and deemed the sandy subsoil layer where they stopped digging to be sufficiently firm. Thus, the caissons were completed and formed the foundation for the two suspension towers. As Washington frequently entered the caissons to oversee the work, he developed a paralyzing injury from decompression sickness, which left him unable to supervise the construction in person. He continued to design the caissons and other equipment from his apartment and thankfully his wife Emily Roebling stepped in to help. She spent the next 11 years facilitating the supervision of the bridge's construction and took on many of the chief engineer's responsibilities. After the caissons were completed, the two iconic suspension towers started their construction. The towers were constructed on top of each of the caissons by placing masonry blocks piece by piece through a pulley system to develop the tower's shape. Both towers were completed by July 1876, and subsequently the cables began their installation in August 1876. 
The main cables were installed first, followed by the secondary suspender wires, which would hang from the main cables and support the deck. The main cables were constructed by winding together smaller steel wires. Through an investigation during the main cable's construction, eight wires were tested, and it was discovered that only five of the eight wires met the design standards. However, at this point, it was too late to replace them, and Washington calculated that the lower quality wire would yield a bridge strength of four times what was necessary, rather than the six to eight times that would be achieved using the proper wires. The lower quality wire was accepted, and an additional 150 wires were added to each cable to compensate for the reduced strength. Once the suspender wires were placed, the roadway and superstructure began their construction. Finally, on May 24, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge was open for use, with thousands attending the opening ceremony. All in all, it should come as no surprise that the Brooklyn Bridge embodies what New York City is known for. Resilience, amazing structures, and expansion. It truly symbolizes the incredible feats of engineering accomplished by the Roeblings and construction teams. Today, it continues to stand unmistakably in New York's skyline for millions to cross in awe and wonder each year. Thanks for getting to the end of the video. The Brooklyn Bridge is one of my personal favorite structures and I had a lot of fun making this video and I hope you learned something new. Please drop a like if you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments below what you would do differently in the bridge's design or construction if you were the chief engineer and rebuilding it today. As always, be sure to subscribe to Structure Simplify and check out our social channels for more simple and engaging infotainment content on the construction processes behind structures.